Welcome to the week four post lab. We're going to be making a change in weight graph in Excel. So to start out, I'm going to build a table the same way that I did for our previous uh, graph building exercise. Okay, all I've done is made the graph that you might already have or might need to construct in Excel. It's the data that we collected um, over the 40 minutes in the lab experiment. Now, last time we just selected this information, um, inserted a recommended chart we wanted a line chart for, um, but in this case, this just shows us a straight representation of the data. We are interested in how much each one changes. So this chart informa information in this chart isn't as much or as helpful as, as it could be. So what you need to do or to make it easier is construct a second table and I have uh, already constructed mine, but I'm going to put them on the same screen so you can sort of see what, what's going on and to make sense of everything. So what I did was I started the zero minutes is now my zero point. And then each additional 10 minute interval, I calculated how far each thing moved. So for example, on the 200, on uh, the 20% and 200 milliliters, we started at 23.4, which is our zero point now. We increased 0 0.4 to get to 23.8. We increased 0 0.7 to get from 23.4 to 24.1. To get from 23.4 to 24.6, we increased a total of 1.2. And then um, the final one is 1.5 to get us to 24.9. So basically, you are seeing the difference from this starting point to each interval. And you'll notice the 60%, we actually had a decrease in weight, so that is listed as negative. So we should see something very different on this graph with using this data as opposed to using um, the raw data that we collected. What I'm going to do is the uh, same graph procedure, recommended charts. We actually want a line graph. Uh, this one is showing most of what we want. We just have to do a little bit of formatting to label the axes and move the information uh, on this uh, y-axis or x-axis for us so it's not in behind the data. So we have our graph. I'll make it a little bit, a little bit bigger so we can see everything. Uh, first thing I want to do is make sure my axes have titles. And then I can go in here and change this to oops, weight. And that was in grams. And then down here we had or we have time, which is in minutes, even though it's already listed on the axis, I'm going to put it there. Oh, and don't forget about our Chart title, we want actually a change in weight. I will just say osmosis lab to, to give it some information in there. Uh, to move the information for the axis, I kind of highlight it by clicking on it. Then in the right click, I can format axis. And then way under the labels, I can click to label position and make it low and now it is in the correct place. So we can see the weight, see the time, see which substance increased, which substance decreased. You know, this one kind of maintained. Um, if you have a color printer, this prints out perfectly fine. If not, I also did mention that that um, data labels can, can kind of help you mark some, some areas, but occasionally it does make the graph look a little bit busy. Um, but if you're having uh, any trouble, just, just let me know. Uh, you know, ask any questions in an email, um, post to that discussion board. Um, and then again, I want to print my graph. I want it to be landscape orientation. Um, so it takes up the whole page because a nice big graph is easier to read. Um, so that's how I would construct a, a graph in the change of weight style. Um, oh, don't want to get out of here yet. So if you have any questions as to how to construct that graph originally, go back to the week two post lab um, and it'll show you how to you know, do all the, the little details. 
Uh, we kind of did things quickly, hoping to, to build on that previous knowledge. Um, like I said, if you have any questions, let me know. Um, if not, I will see you in class on Friday.